So it's a beautiful day in the UK and I'm flight testing what is said to be the best three inch FPV racing quad out there right now. And I must say, having just flown it, I agree. You need this quad in your collection. So into its full review from GearBest is the Emax Baby Hawk R. And this is a very, very highly spoken of racing quad. So I'm looking forward to unboxing this one. It's actually available in a few different variants. So there's actually a two or a three inch version. There's a PMP bind and fly as well. Bind and fly, of course, you get the receiver built into it. And I believe it's an FR Sky. You can also get three different covers that go on top. So I've got the black one here, but transparent might be nice actually, so that you can keep an eye on what's actually going on with the internals of this little quad. Anyway, let's get it opened. So in the box, we get the usuals. We get a set of props. So the props obviously aren't fitted to the quad immediately out of the box. These are three bladed props and they've got hell of a pitch on them. So that's quite interesting. It's gonna be lovely to see how these sound. Also in the box is a bag of screws for attaching the props. And also because this quad comes with a rather lovely camera, we get an included programming board. And then of course the lovely Emacs Baby Hawk R quad. So let's have a look at that now in more detail. So there it is, the lovely Emacs R. And just to give the full effect, I've actually put the props on, but I've not attached them via the bolt, so they are loose. But that is a great looking little quad. It's also very sturdy and solid feeling. That's thanks to the carbon fiber frame. Now, one lovely thing about this quad actually is that the way it's constructed, the arms are detachable and can be easily replaced. So that's quite nice, a really good design. And these arms are lovely and strong. Looks like maybe a combination of one mil and two mil carbon fiber throughout the construction of this. So again, considering the weight of this, I think you're gonna to struggle to break it. So that's really good. On top of that, the rest of the construction is plastic. And wow, that is not your usual little flexible canopy you've got on there. That's a really solid feeling plastic cover. So this whole chassis here actually pivots up and around as well. So removing it's nice and easy. It looks like remove the screws under these standoffs here. And then this canopy pivots up and over, which then of course lets you access the inbuilt receiver and the VTX inside. So talking about the VTX, VTX inside and the other components we've got. It is actually a 40 channel switchable VTX, 25 to 200 milliwatts as well. And it's got a lovely little digital display in there. So you can use that to see what channel and band you're on. And you can also use it, there's a button on that VTX to change the power output as well. Just next to that is the inbuilt receiver. We have got the BNF version here, by and Fly. It's an FR Sky receiver. It doesn't look like an XM Plus actually. So I'm not sure what brand that is, but it's interestingly not a diversity receiver. And that's a real shame. I'd actually be tempted to replace that with an XM Plus because this has got pretty good performance apparently. And so you might be out of your 2.4 gig range before you know it. Inside this main stack, it's an F3 flight controller. It's actually called the Mini Magnum Tower. And there's also an all-in-one speed controller board there that does support BL Heli and it supports 12 amps continuous. Connected to that VTX is a rather lovely camera. Now this isn't your average bog standard cheap camera. It's actually a Fox Ear Arrow and it's a CCD as well, yay. Um, there's a 2.1 mil lens on the front of that. Very, very tiny little lens. But also with that camera, you get this little programming board, which is very interesting. So that's gonna be interesting to plug in and have a play with. Uh, but initially in this review, we're just gonna be getting this bound, getting it set up and getting it test flown. Looking underneath the quad, we've got a battery strap that comes fitted ready in place and there's also a little anti-slip mat there as well. Now, the one thing you might have noticed which I immediately dislike about this drone is the cap. The capacitor has been stuck out the side there. Now, whether that's been done for cooling, I don't know. It just seems like a weird afterthought because that's just asking to be broken. What a shame, but I mean, it's very solid on there. It's gonna take quite something to rip that off, but it's still not a great place to put it. It's sat just above the X-T30 connector here. Uh, X-T30s are lovely little connectors. It's a shame, however, that it's side mounted. I don't like these power supplies that come out the side. Much rather it come out of the rear or the, even the front and then fold it around onto the battery. Just much more logical in my opinion. Finally, my only other dislike about this is the VTX antenna, which you can see 
exiting out of the rear of the quad there. It's a dipole and I've got no issues with dipole antennas, however the placement of that is not very clever because it's very very flexible, very movable and look how close it comes to these props. So you might end up actually chopping the top off that VTX antenna. I would recommend perhaps diverting and securing that so that it points slightly downward. That way it's not going to be in the way of your props and also when you're flying along at quite an angle at least that VTX is going to be kind of sticking out the back a little bit neatly. On the end of that speed controller board are some Emacs own brand motors. They are race spec, or so they say on there, and they are 1106, and get ready for this, 45,000 kV. So nice fast spinning motors for a tiny little three inch quad. Going to be very interesting to see how they perform with these very high pitch uh, props on here. This is going to have serious power, I believe. So overall, a pretty lovely quad. And now this comes in at only $140. That's about 115 to 120 pounds, depending on whether you go for the PMP or the BNF. Now that is really cheap for a three inch quad. It's on par with all the other three inch quads we've reviewed, but I've got big hopes for this one. The other reviews on this are pretty incredible. So it's gonna be probably worth that and a lot more. <laughs> So it's stunning weather, I've got the battery hooked up. This is actually a 3S 850 pack. Um, I'm told that this will actually run on a 4S, but for this flight test, I'm gonna be using a 3S. Um, I don't actually have any 4S packs, and if I did, then they probably have to be a bit smaller than an 850. So I'm gonna give this a try. Now, due to the size of this, and apparently the power of it, I've got quite an extreme camera angle on, on here as well. So we'll see how we fare. But first of all, this is the Loz flight. So let's see what it's like. Up we go. <laughs> oh, this thing feels so light and sprightly. Uh, I mean, this is the good thing about three inch class, kind of two and a half inch almost in fact. Um, it's just easy, you know? It just feels like you're flying something far less dangerous <laughs> and it fits easily in the car. So you can keep this thing ready to fly and have it with you wherever you go. So let's have a little fly around. Oh, look at this. Now I'm about, I'm about one quarter throttle for the hover. That gives you an idea of just how much power this thing probably has. Um, so, wow, first of all, this is just lovely to fly. And it's so quiet. These props are really nicely designed. The props have a really nice contour to them and shape. Let's go for the punch, the exciting bit. So here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. Oh, up to the moon and back. That is lovely. Now, most of these quads really scream when you punch them. This one is just so, so quiet. Let's do that again. So three, two, one. <laughs> yeah. Really, really nice. Look at that, it's got lovely poke to it. Absolutely lovely. And it's just so quiet. So a bit more, wow. The, the stock peered stock rates are quite extreme on this. Um, you could get yourself in a lot of trouble if you're not quite used to flying, especially flying LOS. But I mean, most people are gonna be buying this to fly FPV reality. So let's see what it's like on the old acrobatics let's bring it back a little bit so let's see what the roll's like oh here we go Whoop. wow that's quick so again it's you know you're gonna have to fly this very carefully and if you are new to fpv quads perhaps perhaps turn those stock rates down because otherwise you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble <laughs> this is rapid but you know, that's the good thing about these quads, they're completely configurable. So you're never really gonna get yourself in trouble if you set the quad up properly before you fly it. But oh, this thing flies beautifully. And it's so precise. Feels like the PIDs are really, really well tuned on this. Now this is a company called Emax. They don't make necessarily cheap quads, but they do make really, really good and well-refined quads. And you can feel the difference between this and a Fury Bee. The Fury Bees are really nice. I don't get me wrong, I love them. But they are a bit rough and ready 
Whereas this just feels perfect out of the box. And I've not changed anything on this. And I will also say that as I plugged it into Betaflight, everything was already set up. Every mode, uh, air mode as well, rate, angle, horizon. I didn't have to change anything on this. And that is unusual because generally you do. You have to, you know, most of these quads actually arrive with completely wrong setup. Sometimes the receiver isn't even configured. So if you're looking for your first racing drone, buy a decent one like this and you're going to save yourself a hell of a lot of work. But as I say, if this is your first racing quad, then turn those rates down because this thing will kill you. <laughs> so anyway, this is lovely to fly Loz. Uh, let's get this on FPV and give it a whirl. Okay, so we're on FPV view now and you can see the picture's nice and vibrant, although the weather is becoming a little bit overcast. The picture from this Foxeer camera is very nice. Remember, this is a micro camera, but you can see the CCD element of it by the fact that when we go from ground to sky, we're not getting massive problems with exposure changes. So yeah, nice clear picture. There are some lines on the screen. I don't know if you can see them on the DVR feed, but I can see them through the goggles. And I thought that big massive capacitor, which is installed in a really stupid place, I thought the intention of that was to stop uh, interference in the VTX signal, but who knows, you may also notice the voltage, 16.7. I've switched up to a 4S for the DVR uh, FPV test. So this is gonna be very interesting indeed. So let's see just how this thing performs. So we're gonna go straight into acro mode and arm, and up we go. Oh, what have we got? Oh, we had a bug on the screen then. Okay, here we go. And we're up. <clears throat> now on 4S, this doesn't feel any heavier. It feels nice and light again, still, as it did during the Loz flight. And when we punch... <laughs> it's got loads more power. Much, much better. So I think if you're going to buy this little Baby Hawk, fly it on a 4S because it's a much better experience. Without question. Uh, the VTX signal isn't great. And I put that largely down to that tiny little dipole antenna. I think that's definitely one of the enhancements that I'd make to this little quad would be to switch out that dipole or just change its location because actually dipole antennas are fine. It's normally just the placement of it, which is the problem. And I think in this case, the placement of it is not great actually. Um, if we take it a little bit further away, I'm gonna be wary of dropping below those trees too much. Um, the signal's not bad, but not great. So if we now drop a little bit down, however, we may briefly uh, see the signal starting to cut out there, not ideal. And look at this thing scream. It really goes nicely, absolutely lovely. If we punch out, let's see what the voltage drops down to. Now these are great batteries. Uh, these are the Tattoos, 4S, they're an 850 pack, so the same size as the 3S pack that I put in. <clears throat> um, and it does mean that you can punch out without losing a lot of your voltage. They are really, really stubborn batteries. Uh, but as I say, this thing just flies beautifully on this 4S pack, much, much nicer. Uh, what a great little quad. You just, I mean, even from the sound of it, actually, it is quite quiet, but it really does scream. And you do feel like you're flying a 5S quad. Five inch quad, sorry. <laughs> okay, concentrating too much. I've not been flying for a while. But yeah, this is just lovely. Absolutely lovely. Let's do a bit of a, take it away a bit and get some speed up. Look at the speed of this thing. And what a lovely sound it makes as well really does fly nicely. And it screams. Lovely, absolutely lovely. So in summary, this is a lovely tuned quad straight out of the factory. You're not gonna have to mess around with this a lot. And actually when I plugged it into Beta Flight, I didn't even have to enter any modes into this. Normally they come without any modes, these RTF quads. <clears throat> Most of the time, even the receiver's not set up properly. Uh, this one was just ready to go. 
And that's the difference between this and I'm sorry to say, but a Fura B quad, they are lovely cheap quads, but cheap means that sometimes you've just got a little bit more work to do before you can actually fly it. But this thing is just ready to go. The pids feel beautiful, absolutely lovely. Um, it's so solid in the air and it just flies absolutely beautifully. Um, only complaints about it really are the placement of that stupid capacitor right in front of the USB port. A really, really stupid place to put it. But you can't have everything. And you know, this is not an expensive call at the end of the day for what you get, plus including that lovely Fox Ear camera. Battery life is not bad at all either. This is a four minute flight and we are now draining our batteries. So we best land. But overall, lovely little quad. Here's some positives and negatives. Links to it are in the video description. Give the video a thumbs up and comment. Thanks very much for watching.